Alright guys, welcome back to another one. Today, special day, it's my birthday. So what we've got for you is the both in grunnel I call it, catch and cook. I got well scolded the last time that I caught that grunnel and told y'all that I might cook it on a black stone and I didn't. The reason I didn't is I didn't have all my ingredients that I wanted to make the right video. So today, everything has aligned I've got some new baits that come in that I'm going to try out some corporate uh, baits. I'll show them to you in a little bit. We're going to get rigged up, but the water level is up just barely inside the bank. So what we're going to do is put in the canoe in this low water crossing. We're going to paddle up to a hole that I fished in before. And uh, we're going to see if we can have some luck. We, we were smart this time. We brought a dip net. We've got everything we need. So we're going to get loaded up and get in the water. Y'all hang with us. we got a good one coming up for you today. We got to get rigged up. Now, I did something different since the last time we fished, and we're going to be moving all around, bouncing into stuff, because this current's swirling. So, we're just going to have to deal with that till we get started fishing. We've made us a steel leader. You know, we lost a couple of grunnel in that last video, biting it off. The reason I hadn't already been using a steel leader, and I've got some footage where I tied this. We may drop that in this video. I may do another whole video on it. Uh, but we're going to test it out and see how this works. What I did is I cut that little snap clip that I like so much. You know, it was on my set hook lines. I cut that off. And I simply put my bullet weight on the leader itself. Then I tied the swivel to my line. And then I tied that steel leader back to my hook. So, we're going to see how that works. Now, of course, I throwed some of my plastics in this Ziploc bag here. But, this is what we're going to fish with today. I ordered these from Culprit. If I can find them on Amazon, I'll put a link in the descriptions. Everything I'm trying to use that I can find on Amazon, I'll put a link in the descriptions. I'm an affiliate now. If you go through that link and buy it from there, I get a little help with that. So, But what this is, is the Voodoo Incredibug, 4.5 inches. Culprit makes awesome baits. I ain't affiliated with Culprit in any kind of way, uh, but I like their baits. They hold up well. Let's get one out. If you follow my Instagram, I dropped a picture of it earlier today on Instagram of what this bait looks like. Uh, it's Peden Spirit of the Outdoors on Instagram. Look it up. Follow me there. We put a lot of pictures on there that you probably don't see footage of here. But it's kind of orange on the bottom and this green color on the top, which is a color that I've had good luck with in some other brush hogs. So, But we've got several different baits. We're going to start out with this, and I've been excited about trying it. Uh, so that's what we're going to start out with today. But now we're going to, I don't know how, how good this setup I've got. I don't like fishing grunnel in, in a boat. I just do not. I had rather fish this species, this fish, however you want to call it, on the bank. Partly, I can fish them in here, but it's hard to film in here in this canoe. Now, I can pan fish. I can sit here and film catching bream pretty easy. And we did all right with the bass the other day. But we all were going to get rigged up with our chest mount camera. I've got all my camera gear in this dry bag, dry gear, dry bag. This is an awesome dry bag. I, I'm falling in love with it. I picked it up at a retail store. Uh, so I don't know if it's online. I don't know if they even sell them online. You'll have to look it up. It's dry gear. It's a 10 liter bag. But I've got all my camera gear in it so I don't ruin my cameras. Uh, so I'm going to get set up. We're going to see if we can hang a bow fin. Okay. Now, y'all, I am fishing with this Abu Garcia. Uh, I don't know the name. It's an ambassador 
521 XLT Plus. This is the same one that we fished with in the last video. It's a Zebco uh, Authentic Series. This is a six foot medium rod, medium heavy. But now, just so you know, the tip of this thing has been broke off. So that last deal, and after I broke it off, it become a perfect down here in the swamp because I like a shorter one. It's a little stiffer I'm, without that flex. So, all right, same principle. Let that bait sink down a little bit, pull it up. Now we fighting current here that we wasn't fighting last time, but hold that rod tip up. Reckon what Roscoe's going to do when we hang one. Roscoe, you ready to catch a gruntle? He don't know about this. The water is really too high for this, in my opinion. But it's supposed to be storms coming back in this weekend. This is Friday. And it was the only window I had to come down here and do this. I don't like to come on Saturdays because there's too many other people fishing for me to be down here trying to film. And there'll probably be a crop in here today. They like to come down here and beat on the sides of their boat and everything else. It's hard to, hard to film when they down here hollering and carrying on. And I like to holler when I catch one, but they just be hollering at one another and knocking on the boat. <laughs> I get beside myself, y'all, when I hang one. I ain't gonna lie. Now, a lot of that rolling could be gar. Tell you what, we finna have to have us a drink. And I know somebody's going to ask, what you got in that Yeti cooler? Well, there ain't nothing but water in here. I put these milk jugs in here and freeze them. Ooh. And I swap them out, and that water right there is ice cold. I can swap them about every two days, sometimes every three days. It just keeps the cooler cold. It's the best way to do that. And that's why I brought that big Yeti. I didn't have a, a smaller cooler that that milk jug would fit in. I would like to have put a smaller cooler in here. I don't drink nothing but water. There ain't no beer with me. I don't drink alcohol at all. Not none. Done been down that road, won't go back. Come on, come on, don't wrap up in that stuff. Mm, come on, get out of it. He done wrapped up in them logs. Let me get on my knees. Get my dip net out. Oh Lord, it's tangled up now. There he goes, he come out. This is a pretty good one, I think, y'all. Come on now, come on, come on. All right. Woo! Boat being in the boat. Grinnell in the boat. Grinnell in the boat. Ha! <laughs> Come on, baby. Slow down. Simmer down, baby. Simmer down. He done slung his bait out finally right there. All right. This, this, this. Let's hang it up. Let's put it safely away. Reel this up. I don't want him. I don't want him getting at my toes. Y'all, when we get home, that's a pretty good grunnel. That is a pretty good grunnel. All right.
I don't want to lose him. Y'all see me lose him before. Now, it ain't over when you get them, get them in, in the, uh, but you got to get a hold to him in that pen. I don't want to kill him, y'all. I don't want to kill him. All right. He's safely in the cooler. Definitely will be a catch and cook today, boys. Woo! <laughs> What do you think, Roscoe? All right, let me clean the camera off. I know we slung water probably everywhere. I had to watch that. Ha. Ah. All right, I'll tell you what I have figured out, y'all. These grunnel are not in that deep hole because the water is so swift. Now, them big grunnel, usually I lose them because they tear my bait up and tear my but let's see he ripped that all to pieces <sighs> mm, y'all know I don't quit on a good bait now I've always had better luck out of corporate but now I'm going to tell y'all something when you catch a grunt he's just about going to destroy your bait y'all know how I do this Wind up burning your fingers. I'm shaking now. I'm telling you, I am. All right, now. I'll melt that all back together. These are just plastic, y'all. It's pretty simple to melt that back together. And uh, at least catch one more with it. We did buy two packs of these. And then I'll dip it in that water. Cool it off. Cool it off. He's hear him up there. He's still fighting that cooler. I get excited, y'all, when I catch these things. I'm going to tell you, they ain't nothing, nothing in the swamp that I had rather catch. I like the crappie fish. I ain't knocking not any of it. I love all of it, y'all. But this is where it's at. That ain't gonna happen right there. He tore my brand new bait up. We'd have just as well had a zoom on there, hadn't we? Y'all know how I am about them zoom baits. They good good baits as far as design and catching and all. I just I don't know, y'all struggle with with this. And see how that's got that little barb right there. You can, you can real better make stuff go right over that hook. But right here, man, it is hard. But now I'm going to tell y'all something. I'll tell y'all what I can do with this since I got a steel leader on there. We can melt it right there to the hook. Oh, yeah. Yeah. That steel leader, you don't melt your line into. All this got to do is stay on there till he hits it. All right. Now what we did is we got in this little backwater slough that branches off of that hole. It's dead. There's no current in it. And that's kind of where your fish go to get to get out of the uh, current and take a break from swimming, I guess. I don't know. Feed and whatnot. And I think that's what these grunnels off in the edge of it. Driving in, I spotted this from the road. Snails has done started feeding on it. I'm going to leave it for them, being I've got part of one at the house. Boy, the mosquitoes is eating me up. But anyway, that's chicken of the woods. Right there. We're going to let the bugs have that. Probably some more right around here, Chloe. But that's at the bottom of this oak tree. Right here inside of the road. Another thing I spotted driving down the road. I know my film, I get excited, but look, we're at him.
Y'all, this is just what I saw from the road. There's the buggy. Y'all, this is just a black and decker. It needs cleaning up. I had it cleaned up and I've washed the last time I uh, cleaned fish, it didn't get cleaned back up. You have to turn the blades the right way to get them to go in there. I've, did, I've had this thing though for about two years and it's worked just as well as anything else I've had. I think the roll of paper tiles have made it in yonder, so I'll pat it dry and all that when I get it to the house. We're going to take it back to my house, cook it on the blackstone. We're in our skinning shed over here at the uh, at this cabin. See where my little boy was over here, and he had him a claw hammer he was playing with the last time that we was over here. All right, this is pretty straightforward. I just, I, you refer back to my other both end video that was done last year uh, in, to get an in-depth skinning. I just fillet this out, pat it dry with paper towel. I don't put no water on it. Water speeds up the decaying process of this fish. Now this fish was just alive about, I don't know, 10 minutes ago. In fact, he's still moving some. I see his gills moving, but he's, he's on his last leg. He's about to die. I put them in, in a cooler of water to bring them home or a live well or something. You don't want this fish to die on you before you get it clean. I mean, if it dies, as long as it ain't been dead 10, 15 minutes, you don't want to leave it dead for an hour is all I'm trying to say. And y'all, we only caught the one today. I messed up just a little bit right there and got that fin. I'll have to cut that back out. There is some little small bones. Now, if you don't mind eating around bones, that's up to you. My little boy, I have to keep the bones cut out of everything. Yes. Y'all, this is my birthday present from me to me. Oh, it didn't do. It's not automatic. I'm not a fan of an automatic knife because I've had several of them come open in my pocket. I've never been hurt, but... We'll talk about this knife again in a little bit. I'm going to hurry up and get through this part. Get us on to some... Uh, but where this yellow part you can see, I'm going to just go down to there. It looks like you're cutting off a lot of meat, and you probably are, but you could eat that. But that in a dish pan. I'm going to cut these ribs out of this. This is a buck knife. Oh, I decided I would treat myself. The little black Kershaw that I had been toting. And I keep two pocket knives usually. Sometimes three in my pockets. Because oh. you never know what hand's going to be free when you need it.
And I don't tote a knife thinking I'm going to defend myself with it. I mean, if I had to, I would definitely try, obviously. Uh, life's on the line, you'll grasp for any straw. But, uh, I didn't like the serrated part. I don't, that's a cool little knife. Uh, it's a buck. I'll look up, I got the box at the house. I'll get it and uh, I'll show you this knife. But it was razor sharp when I got it. Uh, and I've used it some and it's still getting hair off. It's not as sharp as it was. But we'll hone it. I don't know how good it's still. I was, my feelings was hurt when it did say it was made in China, but it is buck. I'm not got used to the clip being on the other end of it. All right, guys. Y'all missed out on cooking the last one. I didn't have all my ingredients together. I wanted to be able to do a decent cooking video. I've halfway cleaned up everything. Uh, but anyway, let me get this set up over here. Uh, now what I'm gonna put, I'm putting shortening, what we call it. On this black stone, I have better luck cooking with it than I do olive oil and stuff. So, we're going to let that be getting greased up and let it cure that skillet. I had to clean it off. I, I've, I've struggled with getting this black stone seasoned. Uh, like cast iron gets good and sticky and... So I've struggled with that, but I've been out here cleaning on it, trying to get it just rust up with the humidity we've got. That is the only bad thing about living in Mississippi, and it's not just Mississippi. Uh, I know any of you guys that live anywhere from Georgia across to Texas can tell you down lower half of the United States, the humidity from the Gulf comes up, and it just gets, when it gets hot, it gets unbearable. But that's all right. Okay, now what we've done is I've got my fillets right here, and we're going to lay them on this cutting board where we can make sure that they're like we want, okay? I'm going to pat them down again, make sure the blood, but you can start to see this meat starts to come off of there and that's from it being damp not wet i did not wet this meat you don't wet it do not wet it i went and got another knife i'm gonna cut some of this yellow part off just strictly because i don't like it it's edible don't hurt anything to leave it on there this is just just me personally right here on this let me get something spread this out where i can lay some well, I can throw that away later. I'm trying to make a decent cooking video. I didn't want y'all to think, you know, look at this redneck. <laughs> anyway, all right. Now, what I like to season with, what I consider basic man ingredients, lemon pepper, I love lemon pepper. The average man that cooks, that actually tries to season stuff decently, is going to like to cook with garlic salt and lemon pepper. And I just got great value garlic salt. And I've got that getting pretty warm. All right, I'm gonna go ahead and flip that over because the other ingredients are gonna be liquid and they're gonna soak on down in there and I'll help add some more of them. These are the main two that I put on here. Now, I do use some Tony Satchery's and I need to go get that because being that I'm here eating by myself tonight, my wife did not leave me. She's delivering pottery. I got her working while I'm here playing. Let me go get some Tony Satchery's. best seasoning ever was. My only beef with Tony Satcher's is I wind up putting too much and making it too hot for anybody else to want to eat. But I like spicy food, so it's not a problem for me. I 
You see, I put a lot of it. You can put that on anything and make it good. You ain't gotta know how to cook. You just put Tony Saturies on there. You good to go. All right. Now this is the way I, I do this. This is Dale's seasoning. And this is just lemon juice. I'm gonna put a little down the top. I don't get just carried away with it, but I put it pretty liberal. I like lemon. And if I had a fresh lemon, I would put the lemon slices on there. Now this is where it gets tricky. With that big bottle, you gotta be careful. You don't wanna overpower it. This is good seasoning, but a little bit goes a long way. See how I got a little too much of it, but most of it run off. And I'll put some more on the other side once we flip this over. Okay, here we go. Just like so. That's all there is to it. Both end slabs, baby. And we're going to leave this seasoning on here. I'm going to strain on what I've got here. Is I've been washing chantrail mushrooms. And I got one. You see this bug come up? I don't know what y'all see. That's why you soak them in water. So we've got them in an ice cream bucket soaking. But most of that stuff will float to the top. But anyway, we're going to dump them out. My little boy picked most of these yesterday. And I'm going to just cut them up in pieces. This is all chanterelles. And I am going to go get one other ingredient when I get ready to throw these on there. Now that, that big filet, it'll have to cook for a little bit. I mean, it's... This is common sense cooking. It ain't nothing nothing fancy. And that was one of the reasons I guess I wasn't really thinking it was that important to show y'all. But now y'all well scolded me about not cooking that grunnel. Not just one or two of you. It was everybody I talked to. I want to know how you cooked it. So, we're doing it, baby. We're cooking it. It ain't no, there ain't no certain way to cut these chanterelles up because... You just making smaller pieces out of it. It's gonna cook down in this uh, grease, and some of them you can leave them whole. I ain't too worried about it. Oh, uh, but now I did pick some while I go down there in the swamp. That they they was huge. I mean huge. But they had done faded. You could tell they had been there for a little bit. Like some of them boys say, they done been there a minute. Okay. And this is a big white oak cutting board that I had years ago when we was... I got a bucket now I can throw some scraps in. If y'all don't keep an ice cream bucket and empty milk jug sitting around to do stuff like this, you ain't eating enough ice cream. And of course, my little boy drank all the milk up. He has to have what he calls chop chop. He likes you to get him regular milk and put chocolate syrup in it. And he calls it chop chop. And y'all, I like onion. I like spicy food. Okay. And we got we just picked these peppers out of our garden. I did grow these. We're going to throw them on there. And this one's hot. That's a cow horn pepper. The other one is hot banana. And I don't get too many of them hot one seeds on there. I like it spicy, but I don't like it to just burn me up now. We get this stuff cooking. We're gonna, I'm going to show you my knife. This is my birthday, so... 
I don't mind cooking my own birthday dinner, especially when I get to cook grill and film it and do YouTube. It makes it all worth it. I love doing it. I love filming. I like cooking, especially when I'm cooking wild game. I have to keep a check on this camera, though. That camera right there, it likes to film for a little while and then, then cut off on you. But it takes a better picture than some of the other ones. I'd really rather film with my, my phone, but I can't get good audio. Y'all have finally got me a microphone to go on this camera. So if y'all notice a drastic change in audio, good, bad, whatever, let me know. Cool. As that cooks out, I like to lemon it up. We'll be adding some more seasoning as we go. I'm going to make a sauce too. And y'all, I done got thirsty down there. Now we only caught one grunt because the water is bad up out of the banks. Oh. Well, it wasn't out of the banks, but it's up too high. It's level with the banks. All the low water crossings were really too deep. I probably could have crossed them. It ain't the crossing the water. It's the current going across ways that'll take you downstream and that buggy, the buggy would go through the deep part of the water. But uh, when you're by yourself, you don't be taking foolish chances because I like to come home at night and take it easy. I don't want to be down there trying to drag my really guy to swamp all night, flooded, and work on it. But uh, the current, they just there's too much water to, to effectively catch fish. Yeah, they was there. They was there to be caught. Uh, and if I'd have fished hard, but the next thing is you see this gloomy out. There was a dark cloud rolled up, and I didn't know but what it was fixing the bottom fall out. You don't want to be in that swamp when it starts getting bad weather. And just all it is to it. All right. Uh, how do I want to go, goes about this? <laughs> I need something to rake them off on. I tell you what, let me dump that in. I told y'all that camera would cut slam off on you. I went and got some butter. I like butter inside my, uh, with them mushrooms and chanterelles. You can cook them with grease, whatever else, and that's what that, it's in. It ain't hurt nothing. But this butter, and it'll melt good in there. Mix that butter around on there. Let it melt into there with it. Now I pretty well keep this thing wide open. Uh, I have struggled over the years cooking on it, keeping it hot, but I have since learned how to cook with it. Alright, we're going to... Oh. We need to get some of that oil and whatnot over here. Alright, we're going to start turning that down a little bit on this side. We're going to turn all of it down just a little bit. It's cooking though. It's cooking. Alright, we fixing it. We're going to go at this again. With that. Keep it moist. Now this season and this uh, Dale's, this stuff will burn to that. It'll, it'll cake on there bad, but you just have to clean it up. We got a little heavy with it. Let me turn this light on up here. That helps matters a, a little bit, don't it? The only thing I don't like by turning this light on, bugs get get bad, but you just have to deal with it. Just have to deal with it. All right, we're gonna make a sauce right quick. Pretty straightforward and simple. You probably already know most of this. And we got Southern Mud Pottery Bowl. A little more ketchup. 
and ketchup, horseradish sauce. And I do, I go with the Heinz. I ain't a Hunts guy. I like blue plate mayonnaise. And I do a Worcestershire sauce. I Worcestershire sauce. You boy, it's a tongue twister. I don't think there's nobody in the world knows how to say that. And my own hot sauce. This is habanero sauce. I got a video on making this. Oh, go watch that if you haven't already, but it's hot. Like I said, we like hot. Now that horse, that uh, horse ready stuff, you have to watch it. It don't like to uh, mix up real good. I may have to add a little more. It kind of clumps up. Probably cause it may be old, I don't know. Let me add a little more seasoning on this while I'm... I like my lemon pepper and my garlic salt. I didn't ever re-season this other side. Why not? I wanted to put the liquid on there first before I uh, put this because if you put your dry seasoning and then run your liquid over it right there, it'll just wash it off. And then I put some oregano. I like oregano, and I also like cilantro, but I didn't I didn't find the cilantro, so we stuck with the oregano. This is basically like a cocktail sauce, just homemade. But I like to make it with my flavored ingredients that I like. Like especially the hot sauce, and it'd be easy enough to just buy some, but it's it's better when you make it. And y'all, if this video winds up being an hour long, it's y'all's fault. No. I am not taking the blame for it. I gotta have some more sweet tea. Right. We're going to stir in this some might. Otherwise it'll start a, 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 a burning. Move it around. I'm fixing to drag this fish down here where there is some grease and some butter. And you see how that seasoning cooks to that? Go ahead and just throw that out there to the dogs. Now we're going to cook the uh, chicken of the woods mushroom. We're going to do a separate video for it. Because everybody that wants to see it may not like cooking both ends. And they may not want to watch a two hour long video. Alright. At this point, we're going to clean this up. Now I may need to go put that butter Okay, the knife, buck knife, edge of a legend made in China, it's a Langford, I don't know, I ordered it from Smoky Mountain Knife Works. And I probably threw the paper that went with it away. No, it's still in there. A message from the Buck family. Buck Forever Warranty. Has a forever warranty on it. But I don't know the exact model number. 
Well, I guess I do know the model number. Let's see if we can get y'all a... I may need my glasses. You can see right there. But anyway, throw that down. I'm going to try to hold it where you can see it. It is smooth. Now, I don't got it dirty, but that joker will flip open. I like it. It's not a smooth handle. It has a little bit of texture to it. But anyway, this was my birthday present to me. So I just I'm used to one clipping this way where I when I grab it I pull it up and flip it open. This one hangs the other way, the clips on the, the other end of it. But I, I do not like a serrated blade knife. Now talking about knives and, and we'll just say what do you got in your pockets basically, EDC. Lighter with, with some tape wrapped around the end of it. I keep that in that pocket. And then I keep a knife in this pocket. And this is my old case. It's, it's a carbon blade. It's done rusted and cured. and Basically it's black. It's a trapper. Case trapper. And then I got about three foot of number 72 line. I can use it for a fish stringer. I can tie something down. One thing in trapping season, I can hook that and wrap it around one of them 330s and cinch them jaws together with one hand if I was to get it on me. So there's, I've got a lot of uses for that piece of rope why it's in my pocket. And that's, that's what's in my pocket every day. And usually my gun's on my hip. But being I'm right here at the house and there's one right there in the pickup and however many in yonder, I don't need a gun on, in my pocket out here. Alright. We're going to flip that over. We're going to cook it one more time on that. That little piece come off. It's probably done right now. It's probably done right now. We're not going to add nothing else to it. We're going to leave it alone. Let's see about this. Mm, Ma'am. Doggone, if that ain't the best one I've cooked yet. Look, Roscoe's piled off that bed swing. Here he comes. Roscoe, it's going to be a mite hot, buddy. You stand up for it. It's hot, buddy. It's going to burn your tongue. He wanted it hot. All right, we're going to do this one time better. You ever wonder what happens to Southern Mud Potter if it comes out flawed? Piece got damaged, it become mine. That's my favorite color. All right. Roscoe, you want to try it? Come here, buddy. He come piling up here a while ago when I went to fooling with it. You want to bite? Jimmy Glenn said that was the fishingest dog he'd ever seen in his life. <laughs> ah. You go Roscoe. Get it. We gotta clean it up. I have to get this off while that mess is hot or else. I don't know why I lick it. Just the redneck in me I guess. Be licking stuff for you think about it. Just lick it. 
Ciao Indra, you just like it. Okay. I tell you what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna show y'all a little trick I learned with this Blackstone. And I'm gonna use my, I don't wanna use my fork. I'm gonna wipe that off good. While that is still hot, that'll help cure that. This this short cures better than anything else. Lay that spoon right there, and that'll melt off of it and run off. All right. Let is let is let's get us shoot. Let's get us a whole slab. Look at him, look at him, and we're gonna just scatter them onions and whatnot up here you know, over it, right over here on this side. And see this wavy dip bowl? This is our sauce. We're gonna just kind of go right down the top of that with it. I have done done this one time, so I know that I like it that way. Y'all. That's what it looks like. All right. Y'all know how we do this. I don't even know where my phone's at. But we gotta take us a picture. We're gonna take, well, I don't know which one we're gonna wanna use, so. We're gonna spread these out now. Y'all get to see me make these photos, y'all see. I didn't like the way that looked. Y'all, I love to take pictures. that and over here out of the way. Get this and that here with this sauce in it. Alright. One of them pictures will wind up being the cover photo. Alright. <coughs> I had to keep tabs on that camera, y'all. We're going to take another bite of this with a sauce in it. I can get me a little of that sauce. Man. Chantrell mushrooms. Oh. Them chantrell sauteed like that. Best way by far. I deep fried them. That chicken of the woods. Mmm, y'all. I believe that sauce is some of the best I've made. Hey, that's fine eating right there. You serve that right there in a restaurant, you'd have people lined up out to the parking lot. They'd be sitting in their cars waiting. They couldn't even open the door. There's so many people standing in the parking lot waiting to get in there to eat it. Don't let nobody tell you that both ends not good. Hey, y'all ride around with your live scope chasing crappie all you want to. I'm gonna eat this. It's got crappie beat. Mmm. Man. Get another swig of that sweet tea. Yes, sir. All right. Well, look, thank y'all for watching my video. I hope we didn't disappoint. We'll see y'all next time on Spirit of the Outdoors. Remember, the best way to do things, the way you like to do it. We'll see y'all with another one here pretty soon.